Today on Hot Thai Kitchen, we are making pineapple fried rice. Sawadee ka! Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today we're making the ever so popular pineapple fried rice. And I love making fried rice because they're so quick to make yet so satisfying to eat. So pineapple fried rice in Thai is called khao pat saparot. And khao means rice, pat is to stir fry, and saparot is just pineapple. So let's first take a look at our ingredients. Eight shrimp, leave four whole, and cut the rest into small pieces. One egg, 250 grams of cooked rice, about one and a half cups, quarter cup of small diced onions, one tablespoon of soy sauce, I am using Healthy Boy brand mushroom soy sauce, one teaspoon of fish sauce, one teaspoon of sugar, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of curry powder, quarter a teaspoon of white pepper, half a cup of pineapple, fresh if you can, canned if you must, a third of a cup of roasted or fried cashews, unsalted, one to two green onions, chopped, half a cup of tomatoes, seeds removed and some cucumber slices. And I'm going to give you one optional ingredient for those of you who want some extra fat and shrimpiness. And that is our shrimp tamale, also known as shrimp paste. I talked about this in my Pad Thai variations video, and if you want to know more about it, you can, I'll put the link to that video at the end, but that's basically the orange stuff inside the shrimp head. It's really good in this fried rice. You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, so everything else is pretty straightforward. I will talk about a few things that are quite important in making a successful pineapple fried rice. First is the pineapple, obviously. Um, I prefer using fresh for two reasons. Fresh pineapple has a nice tartness that goes better with savory food. Canned pineapple is soaked in syrup and it's really quite sweet. And the tartness of the fresh pineapple actually balances out the heaviness and the saltiness of the fried rice. So it works, you know, in, in Thai regular fried rice, like in my crab fried rice, we squeeze lime over the top. The pineapple, if it's tart enough, will do the same thing. Um, if you're using canned, if you can't find any fresh pineapple, just make sure you dry off the syrup really, really well before you use it. If you live in a tropical country where pineapples can be super juicy and sweet, which never happens here in Canada. But if you're in Thailand, for example, um, don't pick the super ripe ones because those can be quite sweet and also really juicy and it can make your rice a little bit too wet. So go for like the, the almost ripe one, keep the good ones for eating. And then curry powder. This will be the signature of your pineapple fried rice. There is no right one, there's no wrong one. It's just a matter of which one you like. Curry powder is not an inherently Thai ingredient. It's an Indian influence on Thai cuisine so that you know you don't need to go out looking for the authentic Thai curry powder. So just try out a few, whatever you like will work. You can do what I did, is I got this curry powder and then I decided that, man, I'm not, I don't really like it too much, it's, it's all right. So I, instead of going out and buying another one that I like, I just tinkered with it. I started adding my own spices from the cabinet and smelled it and worked it until I got it to where I actually like it, which is this thing. So now I've got my proprietary blend pies curry powder. So you're more than welcome to do that if you want to. It's kind of fun. Um, finally, the rice. Good rice for fried rice should not be too soft and the grains should separate easily. So. Leftover rice is great, but if you're cooking rice specifically for fried rice, here are some useful tips for making good rice. Tip number one, make sure you wash the rice a few times, agitating the grains vigorously to get rid of excess starch, which is what will make the rice grains stick together. Tip number two, use less water than you normally do. A ratio of one part rice to one part water is a good place to start, but you may need to adjust depending on your rice. Tip number three, if you're using a rice cooker, once it clicks, let it sit for another 15 minutes before you open it. Tip number four, if you have time, spread the rice out onto a plate and let it sit in the fridge to cool down completely because cold rice separates more easily than hot rice. 
And one last thing, if you happen to be buying rice specifically for fried rice, don't go with one that says new crop on the back because those will be a little too soft, too mushy to make good fried rice. So before we go cook, we're going to organize our ingredients by putting everything that are going together together. So I'm going to put all my dry spices together and that'll help so I don't have to grab seven different things going into the pan. My sugar, salt, so that's the dry ingredients. I'm going to put all the wet ingredients together, combining the fish sauce and the soy sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of shrimp paste, not too much. We're going to put the green onions and the tomatoes together because they're going in at the same time. The cashews and the pineapples are also going together, but I don't have any room, so I'm just going to keep it separated. All right, let's go cook. So I've got a pan here with just enough vegetable oil to cover and I'm gonna, we're going to cook the shrimp first separately because I want to be able to control exactly how long the shrimp cook. And I forgot my tongs, so chopsticks it is. And now you're wondering why I have some whole shrimp and some cut up shrimp and that's because I cut the half the shrimp up so that the shrimp lays through all the fried rice so that every bite there's shrimpiness but I kept some whole so I can use them as a garnish on top at the end if you didn't care about how it looked you can cut them all up if you want okay and then whoo, the little shrimp and in this way we're gonna use the same oil that the shrimp are cooking in so the rice can be flavored by the shrimp oil and now Add a little more oil if you need to. And we're gonna go in with our egg. Break it up a little bit. Just before it has a chance to set completely, go in with the rice. That way the egg will sort of be able to hang on to the rice a little bit. So the egg's not chunky and all separated on its own. And then once the rice is all mixed with the egg, go in with the onions. If you like the onions on the raw side, you can go in with the onions a little bit later. But I like my onions to actually be somewhat cooked. So they're going in now. All our dry seasoning. By the way, you can go light on the white pepper if you want. I love white pepper, so I'm putting in quite a bit. And then get that all mixed up. Now is your chance to really make sure your rice is well mixed and broken apart. Okay, so once that's done, your rice looks well mixed and broken up. I'm going to add our cashews and pineapple. Yeah. So now, don't cook this any longer than you need to. Um, if you cook, especially for fresh pineapple, if you cook fresh pineapple too long, they'll start giving off liquid. So what you're looking for is for the pineapple to start darkening just a little. Although if you do this with canned pineapple, it won't look much different. But if you're doing fresh, they'll sort of start to turn darker and a little translucent on the outside. And that just means that the heat has gotten through to the pineapple. I forgot the shrimp. Um, so the shrimp also goes in. And so you're just heating everything up now. You're not really cooking anything anymore, just heating and everything through and then drying out the rice as well because we've added some wet seasoning you want to make sure you dry it off or your fried rice will be wet okay that looks good the pineapple is starting to turn a little bit darker yellow what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna go in with the tomatoes and green onions now these are mainly just for pops of color because otherwise there's not a whole lot of color going on you don't really want to cook the tomatoes because they will give off too much liquid and turn to mush. 
And also, you notice that I removed the seeds from the tomatoes. That's because the seeds give no flavor and add unnecessary liquid. So, and that's it. It's done. Yeah. Plating time. Okay, so some people, by the way, like to add raisins in their pineapple fried rice. And if you like raisins, you're more than welcome to add those. But I... <laughs> Can't stand raisin in savory food. I just can't do it. So I left it out. Okay. So this serves about two. Put that on. And now garnish. Well, not really garnish. I'm putting on cucumber slices, which look like the ultimate, you know, tacky fried rice garnish, but it actually serves a purpose, uh, an actual real culinary purpose. The rice is really rich and heavy and salty. It's really nice to be able to munch on the cucumber, kind of like a palate cleanser in between bites. So they're, you know, they're not just there for prettiness. And then our shrimp garnish. That's why we left some whole so we can ta -da, put them on top. If you want, you can sprinkle some extra green onions on it if you'd like. You can serve this in a pineapple bowl if you have the time and the patience to carve out a pineapple bowl. But I think it's more elegant to serve it like this. So there is our pineapple fried rice. Let's see what it tastes like. Get some shrimp, some pineapple, some cashews. Make sure you get everything, everything in this bite so that we get perfect bite. I feel like just keeping eating and, and, and never mind the ending of the show, but I will end the show anyway. Um, so there it is, our pineapple fried rice. It's super delicious, so fast as you can see. Perfect for a weeknight dinner. If you want the recipe, you can go to hotthaikitchen.com. If you enjoy the show, please click to subscribe and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.